Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Comedian's Tea Party. In this episode, my guest is Ignacio Lopez. We'd not met before or spoken before really, but basically my, uh, it's a strange scenario, my wedding photographer for my wedding that may or may not be happening. It's hard to say, what with coronavirus and all that. She's a lovely woman, stay in touch with her and she she occasionally sends me opportunities for gigs and that sort of thing and she is friends with Ignacio's wife who is also a wedding photographer over in Wales so yeah she just saw an opportunity and you know hooked us up Uh, so I just want to give her a shout out because her photography is absolutely incredible so if you're having a wedding and you're in Essex, Kent, anywhere like you know the surrounding areas uh, give her a shout because she's very very good and obviously because of Covid has lost some work so yeah, give, give her a shout if you can because yeah, she's great. You can go and find her on Instagram. She's at Marie Wooten Photography. That is M A R I E W O T O N Photography. Really great. It's worth going to look at just even to see her photography. It's really brilliant. So yeah, go, go and check that out. It's well worth it. But anyway, this chat, absolutely brilliant. It's really good fun. Got silly, you know, it's just a, just a good standard tea party chat. It got weird, it got funny. We discussed not really serious stuff but you know we discussed comedy and all sorts and yeah it's just it's a lovely really lovely chat thanks to twinings and tea pigs for the tea that we drank in this episode i'm running out of tea i need someone to send me more tea if you're a tea company and you're listening to this send me some tea get in touch teapartypod at gmail.com that is letter t partypod at gmail.com just get, drop us an email and uh, we'll, we'll sort something out i'll give you a shout out it'll be lovely but th- that very discussion does reveal that Ig- ignacio is terrified of beetroot which is interesting i think never experienced anyone scared of beetroot before but there you go a lot of people are scared of a lot of things as it turns out i am scared of marrakesh mint tea listen in you'll see why if you've not listened to the episode with jordan gray then either go back and listen to that or listen to this episode and see what happens or maybe you'll listen to this episode and decide to go back and listen to that one as well because that was also a very good chat i managed to bring back the tea emergency question inspired by brennan reese which, if you don't remember what that is, I tried to ask it a couple more times on other episodes, and uh, and it just got dark and sad. But I felt an affinity with Ignacio and decided to try it out, and it worked out. It's it's a good laugh. And there is also a story that Ignacio tells at the end, which is it's not even his most awkward gig story, but it is probably the most awkward gig story I've heard, and I've heard a lot. <laughs> so it's a it's a lot of mad stuff that happens, but this one in particular pretty special so yeah that's right at the end as well so listen listen in and you're in for a treat anyway with that in mind the treat that you have coming up i'll see you at the end with some plugs and stuff like that enjoy yourselves enjoy the episode pour yourself a tea and have a lovely time see you in a bit There we go. I can uh, now cool. hear. How are you? Uh, yeah, good, man. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm all right. I'm alive. Cool. I'm comfortable. I've got. I'm surrounded by different kinds of tea. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's the dream. It's good. Right. I just need to double check these settings because I recorded an episode with Matthew Crosby last week and I basically just didn't record the first 25 minutes of the chat. So. <laughs> oh, mate. Nightmare. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> Thankfully, he's a lovely bloke, and we ended up talking for like another two hours. So, uh, cool. Right, I think I'm good. By the way, this generally all stays in. Not all of it, but a lot of the nonsense chat at the beginning. Right. No, so, for the last few episodes as well, I've also managed to forget to introduce the show properly until really far in. So, I'm just going to get it out of the way. So, hello, and welcome to episode 32 of the Comedian's Tea Party with Sideeves, with me, Sideeves. And this week, my guest is Ignacio Lopez. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you doing? 
I'm good, man. I'm alive. I'm comfortable. I've got tea with me, which you've sent very generously. I'm looking forward to trying these out. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Uh, so which one have you picked? One, I've gone for the matcha because of how many South American footballers swear by it. So <laughs> maybe it'll improve my performance. I don't know. Yeah, that is, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the one I had on the last episode. And that is delicious. What's it got, like cranberry and stuff in it? That's right, man. Cranberry and lime. I'm a big fan of the citrus as well. So let's yeah. get some of that in there. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious, that one. You've made a good choice. What are you drinking? I've, I, I've got a Tea Pigs Upbeat. I've had this several times, but it's just, it's really nice. So I'm just going back to it because I managed to poorly organise my day. Basically, I decided I, I was going to go to B&M Bargains and go and buy like some cleaning products and stuff this morning. And, Classic. Uh, and then I, I didn't go until like half 12. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're recording this at half two so i basically i got in and i was wearing a jumper a moment ago and i'm too sweaty that's that's where we're at <laughs> and a very anxiety no sweat, field that's the sort of shop where like they they set it out so that if one person is in the aisle you have to wait ah uh, yeah which in this particular you know covid climate it's not ideal no i like the mixture that bnm kind of sell the kind of stuff as well so they've got you'll walk in and it'd be sort of cleaning products and then immediately food yeah. You know, you've got some clothes thrown in there as well, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah I just yeah. like the I like the combination. There's no it doesn't feel like any thought has gone into the order in which they put the stuff in no, the store. Absolutely. Some of it is put together, some of it is not. Like you've got food, <laughs> food, cleaning products, more food. Like, why is the cleaning products in the middle? That's deadly, surely. <laughs> Kids are going along going, I oh, that looks that looks tasty. Let's try that. Oh, that is I uh, like how everything feels like it's a good price, like it's a bargain. <laughs> You know, it doesn't necessarily, if you work it out afterwards, you're like, well, I've bought, you know, 400 monkey nuts for, you know, a pound, one pound 20. That yeah. seemed like a bargain at the time, but now I've got it home and I'm calculating it. Half of these monkey nuts are empty. You know, it's just the shell. Oh, so yeah. it doesn't feel like as good a bargain then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also like that shop in general, I, I think it, it feels like the, the sort of the middle aisle of Audi, but sort of w without the... <laughs> Over a whole store. <laughs> yeah. Just without as much stuff. Yeah, it's weird. But they sell stuff in there. They always sell stuff like... I, I, I like cider more than sort of any other alcoholic drinks, really. And the ciders that they sell in there just don't exist anywhere else. <laughs> Have they got all of the... Uh, are they like knockoff of other ciders or are they actual uh, independent yeah, I ones? Yeah, I think they do have some of them like they've got some different like different varieties of like brother's cider but i'm pretty sure that next to the brother's cider they've also got like sibling cider <laughs> it's not a nice. real thing <laughs> instead of instead of strongbow they've got like hard crossbow or something like this yeah I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hard i don't know what's the what's similar to a bow i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's some yeah sure Hard I've, I've, archer. I, to be honest with you, my my brain's not necessarily working correctly. I've been to the chiropractor today. That's what oh, I, okay. that's my activity for the day, and they've just kind of reset my spine, uh, uh, so I'm feeling quite comfortable. I've got the new computer chair, so this is all very new for me, oh, like new nice. surroundings and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'm sat on my sofa, which is very comfortable. So <laughs> nice. That's, yeah, not quite as good for my lumbar, but you know, <laughs> I'm comfy, so it's all that matters. Now, I normally like to do a little bit of research into my guests and. Having left everything last minute, I haven't, I haven't done anything. <laughs> so, no problem, man. I'm, I'm happy gonna... to fill in any blanks you might have. Yeah. So, you, how long, how long have you been in the country? That sounds like a, I've a, been... a, a Brexit question, doesn't it? It's not. Yeah. It's... <laughs> this, this feels like an immigration interview over Skype. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real no, casual. I'm, I've been living in the UK for nearly, well, over twenty years. Oh, really? I've been over oh, here wow. for a long time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thirty-four. I first came over when I was five, uh, then we went back to Spain, and I've been back and forth my whole life. So even though I've been here for 20 years, uh, my father still lives in Spain, so I go back relatively often. Oh, okay. uh, well, I used to go back often yeah. until I started doing stand-up comedy, and now I just tend to stay here because there's not much comedy in Spain. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Are you the only Spanish comedian I know of? <laughs> I might be. There's not many well in the UK. There's no. no, there's. I don't think there's any pros on the circuit anyway. No, there's... there's. There's bound to be a bunch in London that I don't know. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, but they don't count. <laughs> They're not <No>. real. <laughs> Where, whereabouts in Spain were you from? So I grew up in Mallorca. Uh, oh, that's okay. where most of my family are. Uh, so I'm. I'm very familiar with. Like my mum is Welsh, so I'm half 
half Spanish, right. half Welsh, which is why I haven't been kicked out of the country yet. I've got yeah, a yeah. dual nationality. But my my family tent, most of them are in Mallorca, but I've got family in Madrid and Barcelona as well. So anytime I go to Spain, I can't go on holiday anywhere in Spain without having to visit about 20 cousins. Yeah, and yeah. Big family. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, that does make that. Well, thankfully, I. I say thankfully. Like my my cousin lives in Spain. She pretty sure she's in Mercia. Nice. Yeah, it's near there. Or is that where I went on holiday once? But it, I know it was near where she lived. I can't remember. But yeah, she learned Spanish in school and sort of got good at it, and then went to Spain to teach English, and has been there ever since. And wow. She's... I don't. I envy that because I did. You know, I've practically done the opposite. I've always spoken English, but you know, I learned comedy. And then I wound up stuck in Wales. <laughs> yeah, Wales is nice. Some good stuff yeah, no, in Wales. I, I do like it. I'm I'm very deprecating about Wales, but I love it. I think I'm allowed to make fun of Wales because I'm half Welsh and I yeah. live here. You've, I you've been there more than half your life, right? So that's, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I get annoyed when people outside of Wales make fun of Wales. That yeah, yeah, me. absolutely. But if I'm in Wales and or if people are Welsh, then I, I let them get away with it. Yeah, like I'm from Essex, which gets a lot of stick from people all over the country. And quite often people are sort of really specific. And I saw someone the other day from like Suffolk, which is just outside of Essex. And they were saying like, oh yeah, Southend's a s***. Oh, and I was like, who are you to talk about Southend? That f- you. Ah, like, and I was, I was absolutely livid. And then someone else said something and I was like, nah, Southend's a s***. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to. It's like your family, isn't it? Like you're you're allowed to moan about your family and criticize them, but as soon as anyone else says anything about your family, you're on them. You know, it's like how Absolutely. dare you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, my mom's moaning at me. Someone says, "Oh yeah, your mum moans a lot." Like, who are you? <laughs> how dare you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lots of fights live. break out that way. It. I think people are also. It's quite interesting. You say like you know Suffolk is well. That's the next county over, is it? From yeah. from Essex. Yeah. So like yeah. you've got. You know, somebody that close to the vicinity, like criticizing a place which is essentially their backyard, like it's the same yeah. place. Like when I, that always makes me laugh. That only happens in the UK, I think. Like local rivalries, like one town next to it, they can hate the next town over. Yeah, it's like yeah, you guys, yeah. you're the same stock. You know, you're the same family. You're in the same island, B&M bargains. You know what I mean? It's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's the way Britain works, you know, like by by the time you've got to the next town, the, the accent's probably changed already. Exactly, man. That only happens in the UK. You don't get that in Spain. You can't yeah. designate somebody as precisely by their accent in Spain as you can in the UK. Yeah. I told this story on the podcast before, but I was in Edinburgh. I was doing the stand. And do you know a comedian called Amy Matthews? I know the name. We've not gigged together. Though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was talking to someone else and then she just sort of, She's like, oh, sorry to butt in, but I recognise that accent. She's like, you're, you're from where I live. And I was like, oh, where do you live? And she said, oh, Leon C. And I was like, yeah, I'm like just down the road. <laughs> but she knew like from my particular twang that I was from that very <laughs> area. Nice. So funny. It always happens to people on holiday. Like even when I, back when I was working in a, the bar in Mallorca, yeah. Or in Menorca, I worked in the bar in Menorca as well for my dad. Like whenever you get British tourists come abroad, they'd be at the bar ordering drinks and they turn to the other one and go, where are you from, man? <laughs> you know, and they just <laughs> and they'd immediately pick up on an accent. They'd be like, ah, and they'd, they'd find someone somehow. Yeah, you know, yeah. they've, they've traveled for a few hours via plane. They've ended up in a hotel and they'd, they'd be next to somebody who lives three streets over from them, you know, that yeah. they've never met before. Yeah, fascinating. Years ago, what was it? Like 15 years ago, probably slightly more. I went snowboarding in this tiny, tiny little village. Like I, I've, I've talked about it since, and everyone who even snowboards just says, "Like I don't know where that is." It's a tiny little village in Italy, and I'm walking down the street, and I saw one of the regulars from the pub I was working in at the time. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "What's going on?" Yeah, you think your mind's playing tricks with you, like you're on the Truman Show or something. It's like, did yeah, they yeah, run yeah. out of actors? They couldn't even get an Italian actor, <laughs> so they've shipped one in. <laughs> Come on, man. There's plenty of actors around. Spread the wealth. That's that's Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, isn't it? That's Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So what have you been up to during the lockdown? Have you been we so we briefly discussed it on Messenger. Yeah, man. Well, you know what it's like. We our work dried up overnight, so yeah. we had to be creative. You've been running this podcast now for thirty two weeks, is that right? Oh no, I started last year. Oh, oh I, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but this, this is, is episode thirty two. Yeah, got yeah. you. Oh well, smooth. In which case, uh, well done, Matt, for being preemptive. You, <laughs> that's. I don't understand like how people had any motivation for that kind of stuff pre pandemic. You know, like yeah, how did yeah. you find the time? Well done. But in the in the lockdown, I've been typically running a pub quiz, which 
which is what everyone's been doing, oh, cool. I think, yeah. in lockdown. So I've been doing that for 35 weeks. I've doing lots of stand-up gigs online, Zoom yeah. gigs, you know, trying to entertain people that way, making sketches and videos and putting them out. Weirdly, I recorded my special in Manchester the day before they just went into their second lockdown. Oh, right. So American company called Comedy Dynamics, they were they offered to they wanted to record my special for an album and it was supposed I was supposed to be on tour in April yeah so it was supposed to be playing uh, I was meant to be playing a sold out you know four or five hundred seater in in Wales somewhere but instead of that we ended up fortunately we we managed to do it in in Manchester because no live gigs were allowed they're still not allowed in Wales yeah, yeah so yeah. we did it there the day before they went into lockdowns so we were waiting for the announcements we we're like please don't lock down the day wow. of the show, you know, so people were able to come. But we did it all socially distanced in the frog and bucket, and it went really well. It was really nice. Oh, cool. So it's been a highlight. Yeah, an excellent venue as well, uh, worthy of anyone's support if they're not aware uh, they didn't receive funding in the whole Save the Arts Yeah, I don't, because of that, because they've been really good to me the last couple of years. I only started playing the Frog and Bucket a couple of years ago because my agents oh, okay. from up north, I didn't used to gig up north much. I'd be gigging in, you know, I do the Midlands quite a lot and obviously in Wales and I'd yeah. go over to London and places in between, Bristol, etc. But my agents started getting me gigs up north and I played the Frog and Bucket, wonderful gig. They didn't get art funding which is crazy because so many other comedy clubs did so i actually i donated yeah. all my ticket money from the from the special to to the club to keep them going because oh that's amazing i uh, mean they, they're they're a really nice group of people working there and running it like they had to cancel one of my gigs last minute and they they paid me for it anyway so oh, i just wow. wanted to re return the favor in some way because they yeah oh that's really kind. we've been stitched up i think comedy so anything yeah yeah absolutely yeah was that is that going to be an audio album or it's going to be an audio album hopefully released either the end of this year or beginning of next year and we shot it as well we filmed it but i've got no idea how long that's going to take or what platform it's going on so comedy dynamics right. they work with uh they do stuff on like prime video on amazon they've got some netflix ones out oh, so i don't know where it's going to end up but that's entirely up to the american company i'm happy to just let them run with it i'm i'm done with the show now it's recorded <laughs> I can yeah, move yeah, on yeah. The next thing. this is <laughs> yeah. yours now <laughs> you can walk away. Nice. Is that the show that you're going to be touring? Yeah, so I did it in Edinburgh last year, and I did a couple of shows at the end of last year. It was meant to be touring this spring, but obviously pandemic hit, and yeah, I just I wanted to get it recorded and, and out there yeah, because sure. people couldn't come and see it live, and that's the closest way they can, so yeah. Yeah, so, like you know, uh, what with the sort of the vaccine coming out, there's a moderate chance that sort of gigs will be happening again. W will you tour it if, it if the opportunity arises, or are you just working on something else now? I've got see, I've got a bunch of other solo shows as well. So I now that I've recorded that one and it's going to go out, I wouldn't want to be doing the same show that people potentially have already heard or already seen sure. online. So I'm going to do one of my other shows. So the show that's been recorded is called Espanolo, which is a show all about Spanish history. Oh, okay. And in relation to the UK as well. I make it applicable for British people. I start the show by the disclaimer. When I started performing Espanolo around the UK... I discovered that British people couldn't give a flying fuck about Spanish history. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to make it applicable to British people and that, that warmed them up to me a bit. So I, it yeah, yeah. felt okay. Yeah, I can imagine like when you're doing that in Edinburgh, that would draw its own sort of crowd. But yeah, as soon as you start turning it around, people are like, <laughs> I'm not here for this. Exactly. Well, it's, you know, you start talking about the 14th century king of Spain and British people are like, mate, we don't, the only monarchy we care about is Princess Diana, according to the Daily Express. That's all we care about. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So was it uh, like obviously a socially distanced audience for your album? But like, have you heard, so David O'Doherty recorded an album during the first lockdown, which was, I don't know if you heard it at all, but he recorded what he would have been touring but recorded it in his parents' car or in his car or something, <laughs> like just sat in the back of it at midnight one night. He just got in and just recorded through it. Wow. But it's great. Yeah, I can imagine. It's really, yeah. But he's still doing his songs and he's still sort of like, he's saying stuff like he'd be talking to the audience. And I just found it really interesting to see, well, not see, but like to hear the sort of the cadences that he's using were still roughly the same as if, if he'd been talking to an audience. And yeah, I thought it's really interesting sort of way of, hearing an album but still laughing the whole way through yeah so yeah it's great well, i recorded in the first lockdown because i had a bunch of new material i'd written about the pandemic and lockdown and stuff i recorded a stand-up special in my flat right okay. so i just i pretended i called it the worldwide tour of my flat and i pretended that each room 
in my flat was a venue right. and, I, and I went up and I did, you know, a show in each room and I recorded it and put it out. And I, I just put it out for free for people to watch because it's just it was just a silly experiment to see if it would work. Yeah, it was before I was really getting into doing Zoom gigs and stuff with an audience. And it's it's weird performing your material and having nothing back. So yeah. I think you lose a lot of the gaps, but the, the punchlines are all there and they work as I've cut some of them up into little clips and put them out. Oh, yeah. They've kind of had good reactions and stuff. So and it's still up on YouTube, but it's a private link. Um, right, if I get okay. enough subscribers, I think I'll make it public again. <laughs> nice. Were you charging for that or? No, it was just free. I just put it out, but I, I wanted to make it, I wanted it to feel like the live experience. So even though I'd recorded it by myself, I wanted people to all watch it on the same weekend. Right. Uh, so okay. when I, so this was like back in April or um, May, I put it out. I think it was the end of April. And I, so I wanted that kind of vibe of like everyone talking about it the same way as if they'd gone to a gig or something. Yeah. So that was quite nice that I, I, I had it up over one weekend and then I just, I, made, I set it to private then and just took it off because I didn't know what I was going to do with it or if I was going to, I didn't know how soon we were going to return back to gigging. Yeah, so I course. thought, oh, I'm going to be able to do this material back on the road and stuff. And then no, that's not happening. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. the video is still there in limbo. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's I, I. I was thinking recently. I wonder if I should sort of try and record like my last show in that same way because essentially nothing's happened with it. Really, I sort of I I, I didn't even take it to Edinburgh because I just, I was buying a house at the time when I was writing it, so I couldn't afford to. Well, uh, that's it. You weigh it up, don't you? You go. You look at the when you're going up to Edinburgh. It's like, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to spend money on a venue and accommodation in Edinburgh, or am I going to buy a whole house in a yeah, different part yeah, of the country? It costs the same <laughs> amount. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, I bought a house. So yeah, I was, I was trying to work out if I should maybe just tour that show, but now like maybe I just do it and then tour a new show but I've not actually toured any shows yet so it would be a new experience anyway but I've started writing well I started writing two different shows concurrently and I think I'm combining them into one good show instead of two nice sort of yeah man shows. you never know what it's going to turn into because like I started writing a show about my family history and then I was writing another show about just a bunch of observational stuff about modern day society and things and they kind of I just smashed them together and that's kind of what the show I'm working on at the moment, you know, so I think that's the way forward. Yeah, that sounds good, man. What's your, what's your show? What are your two shows about? What are the what are the topics? The two that I was writing sort of concurrently, there was there's one called OCD, which is... Got to have just... a pun in the name. Gotta oh, absolutely. In the name. Well, see, I, <laughs> I, I can't do puns like in any other, <laughs> in any other way, like in, in no form whatsoever can I do... <laughs> I just like quite often with my friends, we'll be sitting there at a party, like, and I've got a few friends who are incredible at puns, and they'll just sit there going, bam, 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 like pun after pun. And then I'll be like, I don't know, I'll try one thing and it won't be a pun. And I'll be like, right, I, I understand why I don't do that. However, show names, I can pun on my name quite easily. So, yeah. So there's OCDs, which is it's about exploring sort of OCD and anxiety and how they're sort of they're related. And because I, I used to have like a slightly worse OCD than I have now. Now it's fairly mild and I've I've found that I've sort of helped it through dealing with anxiety, which it's all sort of part of the same thing. It's all just trying to take control of, of, of whatever situation it is by doing something obsessive. So you're taking control of that thing back so that you sort of feel, you know, confident again. And it's just a really interesting concept to me so but like i know there's people that sort of got it worse so i just thought it'd be really interesting to sort of research it more and like look into it and find out more about it so yeah i thought i'd do that but i've also in the last two and a half years i've had like four i think surgeries on my eye wow yeah and like i was i went blind for a little bit and in one eye and yeah so like i've i've, <laughs> I've written quite a bit of material about that i'm not sure it all like it'll work it'll work as a show but i'm not sure that the whole hour is going to be specifically about my eye however that is called cyclops nice <laughs> which I'm, I'm particularly proud of that one so i mean you've gained you've got vision back in both eyes now yes yeah okay cool yeah moderately cyclops well. so the, i mean the i mean it's very much like a real cyclops in that you know they were mythical and they don't or they don't exist anymore and yours you now have your vision, so you're no longer a cyclops. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> I'm still due to have more surgery on it, though. So. Oh, okay. So yeah. we, I'll cross may, my fingers it, for you. <laughs> yeah, it may, it may go back. It may be relevant again. We'll see. Hope. Imagine you purposely blinded yourself so that the material was still relevant. <laughs> yeah. That would be a commitment to the gags, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really would. 
I once read that for Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey, he filed down his front tooth. Yeah, he did that. He's insane. <laughs> Which is, and that is, that is too much commitment. So if I think that's too much commitment, probably not going to blind myself for the sake of a joke, but maybe. <laughs> that's insane though, isn't it? It is nuts. I mean, the, the thing is, it's one of those, I don't know if he has his original teeth anyway, because they're all, you know, in Hollywood, they've got all of the different yeah, of course, you know, yeah. surgeries and stuff on their, on their teeth. So there's a good chance that it was easy to remedy and fix and stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should hope so. I mean, it was a good job that the first one, the first film was so well received. Can you imagine he did that for nothing? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine you fired down, down your shit. teeth <laughs> and it won a Razzie or something? <laughs> oh, man. That would be horrendous. Oh, God. What do you think of that tea, by the way? It's good, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah nice. I've, I've, I've already polished it off. It was, it was tasty. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this one is consistently delicious. I'd fully recommend it. Yeah. Do, I don't know what it is. Like, uh, uh, to my knowledge, I've never really had much beetroot in my life. But beetroot tea is incredible. Oh, yeah. I'm terrified of beetroot. I don't like it very much. Oh, really? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why is that? That's... Tell me more. Just, I think just the smell. And apart from the fact that, like, if you chop up beetroot or whatever, it looks like something from a horror movie, you yeah. know? It's just such a rich color, which is I, it's weird because I'm a big fan of, like, the color crimson and I wear a lot of, like, maroon and, like, those kind of colors, burgundy. Yeah. But, like, for some reason, just as a food, just seeing beetroot and the smell itself just puts me right off. Really? It, sounds, it's, it smells really vinegary, doesn't it? Yeah, the scent yeah, yeah. Of yeah, but I, I might take your word for it and hold my nose and try the beetroot tea. Yeah, do it, man. <laughs> it just looks like a standard hibiscus. So it, it has got, it's 50% hibiscus, okay, 21% beetroot, 19% ginger, 6% green tea, 4% carrot. It sounds like it's got enough in it to overpower the beetroot. Yeah, That's absolutely. What, it's a good, a good balance there, I think. Yeah, it's quite, I'm, a, it's I'm quite a mild actually, flavor. I'm going to give the Marrakesh mint a go. I'm going to move on to that one. Oh, yeah. From the tea pigs that you sent me, because it's Marrakesh mint, and my, my dad was born and raised in Morocco. So, oh, was it really? Oh, cool. Yeah. Not, well, not in Marrakesh, but in a place called Meknes. But yeah, it'd be cool to try this out. Yeah, nice. I'll yeah, tell that is a nice too. one. I had that on. I had, <laughs> they sent me more of that tea bag than any other tea bag. They sent me like a massive box, but they sent me like sort of between two and four of each one. But they sent me about 10 of those. <laughs> So I just keep sending them out to everyone because I'm scared to try it again because I, I really liked it when I had it. But when I had it, my face ended up itching <laughs> during the oh, podcast. No. <laughs> but on that particular day, I'd recorded like three podcasts. So it may have just been like an excess of tea. <laughs> but Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I'll try just the one. If I get any kind of itching or whatever, then I think we can add that to the symptoms, the yeah. side effects on the packet. Yeah, Marrakesh yeah. mint may cause facial itch and... <laughs> podcast anecdotes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'll get in touch with tea pigs tell them to sort it out <laughs> what got you into tea man how come you're doing a podcast about tea or not about tea but you know what i mean just chilling yeah. out with tea well again this is this is a story that i've sort of told before on the podcast but i really enjoyed watching comedians in cars getting coffee when that was on like jerry seinfeld's show and i thought to myself like oh wouldn't it be fun to do like the quintessentially british version of that <laughs> which would just be comedians drinking tea. So here we are. But I also wanted to start a podcast and I had to find a niche for myself because there's a lot of podcasts of just two blokes chatting. And so, did, uh, did did Niche agree to do it? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm actually, I'm trying to get in contact with him at the minute. So hopefully he will. He uh, looks like a tea drinker. I think Niche yeah, would do it. I reckon he's yeah. a tea drinker, yeah. I've not met him though before. That's so. That's sort of the the awkward thing of like reaching out to people and being like, "Hello, you don't know me, but talk to me for an hour." <laughs> I don't think there's many jobs that I think comedians are very we're used to that and we don't see it as that strange. You know, if somebody yeah. gets in touch like, "Hey man, do you want to catch up or you want to chat?" You might never have met each other or maybe geek together once or something. And yeah, yeah, we. I mean, we just like to talk, don't we? Yeah, it's as absolutely. simple as that. That's we it. chose Could... a job where we can just ramble on. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people have pointed out that obviously during lockdown. Not only have we lost gigs, but we've lost time sitting in green rooms, meeting comedians and just chatting to our friends and stuff. So Absolutely. I miss that the most, man. I think that that is the most enjoyable part of comedy, apart from the gigging itself, you know, because apart yeah. from that, a lot of people think it's very glamorous, but <laughs> most most of comedy is if just they know. <laughs> Exactly, man. It's just staying in rubbish hotels and sitting on public transport or driving alone, you know, for hours on end. So yeah, people yeah. don't get that it's... It's not quite as exciting as we make it look on stage. Yeah, that's it. That's the 
you know, people watch it and they're just like, oh, but you look like you're having such a great time on stage. It's like, yeah, because I'm not f-ing driving. <laughs> <laughs> just taking an opportunity to stop driving for a minute. <laughs> it's nice to just breathe something other than my own aircon flooding my, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my own scent back at me. Yeah. I do like driving though. I do. I do quite like long drives. I just listen to podcasts. Yeah, man. Well, I, I to be honest, on I, I take a lot of public transport. I don't drive. Okay. Uh, so I'm. But I, I really take. I miss that part as well. Just sitting alone. Just I get so much stuff done on public transport. Like I used to write so much. You know, yeah. I'd edit. I'd edit videos on my phone because phones are so you know technologically incredible now. You can yeah, do anything yeah, yeah. on them. Like I went to. I went to film school, and you know the computers we used to have then. That was back in. Like 2008, I graduated, yeah. and the computers you used to have to have to edit the kind of stuff I do now on a phone used to be like the size of my bathroom. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. insane. And now I can do it all on my on an iPhone. Yeah, nuts. Like I went to music college, and we were using the. Do you remember the like the the first of? It wasn't the first Apple Mac. I can't remember what they called them, but it's the first one where everything was in one. Yeah, and the iMac. Like, yeah, it was the iMac. Yeah, with the yeah. like they had colorful like see through plastic backs on them and they were absolutely disgusting <laughs> <laughs> i loved it i'm a proper apple guy i love i love that stuff yeah <laughs> oh, they were great like they were cool but th- those are what we had in our college classrooms and we're like editing music on those and it's like oh i want to edit this so i'll just put a little cut point there bam do that see you in 10 minutes i'll be back yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we had in college as well and i, I remember like doing graphic design on that sort of stuff <laughs> yeah. and they, you know you yeah on photoshop back then you could basically you could you know, you could illustrate a stick man. And now I can do that, you know, the type of stuff I could do on the Apple Mac on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just with it, with the tap of a finger. It's, yeah. it's nuts, man, what, it's what, how technology come out. I, I feel like such an old guy. I feel like, I feel like the difference like that technology is like when cars were invented and somebody going, <laughs> yeah. like ranting to a little kid. It's like, no, you don't understand. We used to have a horse, all right? Yeah. We used to, if we wanted the horse to travel, we had to feed it like 1,500 apples in order to get it to travel this one thing. Now we can just fill it up in the tank. I have to brush my horse quite regularly. Like you just get in your car. You've got a car wash. <laughs> Like, you can't take a horse for a car wash. They do not yeah. like it. And you'd get soaked as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to wear a, a rain mac. Like, it's a real, it's a real look. So you've come out of your lockdown in Wales now, right? So we're allowed to go out and shop and go to pubs and stuff again. We haven't, Michelle, my partner and I, we haven't been out yet. Michelle's been to the shops once. And I did a gig, actually, the first gig in Wales I've done since March, a couple of nights ago. And oh, it was wow. actually for the, for the Wales football team. Okay. Because we're still not allowed to put on live gigs in Wales. But the Wales football team are locked down in their hotel for the, the, the right. Nations League. So oh, okay. they... They've just been providing a bit of entertainment for them, and they booked me and my friend Leroy to go do some stand-up comedy for them. We had to go do a COVID test. Yeah, they were super strict on security and stuff. They checked my passport multiple times. <laughs> wow! And then we finally got into the gig, so that was quite. It was weird and fun. Yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. It was like we'd crashed their training session. Like they're all still in sort of you know training suits, like gear, and they just eaten food, and then it was like okay. Nobody introducing us. I just walk up and go, okay, guys, we're doing some stand-up comedy at you now. (laughs) See, before lockdown, that sounds like an absolute nightmare. But now, I bet it's just nice to talk to people. Exactly, mate. Absolutely. And there was no, to be fair, like they're they're a a good group of guys as well. I know that, you know, I've heard stories about some some footballers can be very, maybe temperamental or difficult to get along with. But they're they're just a good group of guys. They're a really young team as well. So I don't think there's many egos. Yeah, I got to meet Gareth Bale, which was really cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, we were to- the two things we weren't allowed to talk about were Ryan Giggs because obviously <laughs> he's in the news recently. And oh, is he? Yeah. Well, I won't go into too much detail, but he was arrested for uh, something very recently, and so he is temporarily suspended, I think, from the from managing the Wales team. Oh, so okay. we weren't we weren't allowed to mention that. You can you can tell me what he did if you want, and I'll just I'll bleep it out. Well, I think is I don't know if he did it or not, but he right. was arrested for for. Oh so, man! And it, you know, they said, "Oh, you're not allowed to talk about Ryan Giggs." And I was like, "I mean, that topic doesn't really lend itself to comedy anyway. It's not no. the type of thing that I just stroll out and just start. Oh, so Ryan Giggs has been in the news, hasn't he? And just start <laughs> cracking jokes about you know potentially there's been some. <laughs> and so, and the other thing was Real Madrid, and I'm a Real Madrid fan. And I was gutted that I was not allowed to go up and crack jokes at myself, Real Madrid, and Gareth Bale's expense. Yeah. But 
yeah, it was okay. It was still fun, but I'm annoyed I couldn't say that. <laughs> why, weren't, why weren't you allowed to talk about Real Madrid? Well, Gar- Gareth left there, and I think that there's, it's just been right. such a contentious issue. Like, he's back at Tottenham now, and he didn't have a particularly fun time at Real Madrid. He was there for a while, a long time, but, you know, it looks like him and Zidane didn't get on, or Zidane didn't want to play him, and Gareth Bale wasn't happy at the club. And lo- lots of, there'd be all jokes, like the Welsh squad, somebody said, it was a phrase that came out, which was Wales, golf, Madrid, in that order. Like, that was Gareth Bale's priority because right. he likes to go off and play golf all of the time. So that kind of criticism made its way amongst the Real Madrid fans, and they re- reacted quite negatively. Right. I never okay. saw it. I never saw it that way, but some Real Madrid fans did. So, yeah, I, w- I would have made a joke about it, but I wasn't allowed. <laughs> and I didn't, wa- I didn't want to burn down that bridge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. First gig I've had in Wales since March, and I didn't want to stroll out and go, well, let's break the rules immediately. Yeah. First gig in Wales since March, and uh, Gareth Bale punches you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been memorable for oh, sure. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. You'd be in the news. <laughs> what other gigs have you done? So you, you, you said you'd, you'd done about 12 since the... Yeah, I've done a handful. I went to... I, I only got to practice my show for the special once i went to top secret in london which is an amazing wow. club yeah and i did i did it there which they've got all have you been to top secret recently in london no i haven't no they've they've put up perspex between all of the rows yes i've seen some videos yeah so they're suspended from the ceiling and you've got these sheets of perspex and i, I went to london a few weeks before that i was doing another show just a, a spot and i went over to see my mate leo curse playing in top secret and yeah. I, I saw it and i thought it looked really weird. I was like, this isn't going to work. Like you've got all these sheets of perspex between everyone. It's going to be, you know, and they're kind of rocking as well because they're suspended from like cable or whatever from the right. ceiling. They're tied to the ceiling and they kind of move. And I thought this is going to feel really bizarre. But as soon as the show started and as soon as like the acts went on stage and started doing it and, the, you know, the lights are down, you, after a couple of minutes, you don't even think about the perspex. You know, the, we're so good at adapting to stuff, I think. Yeah, not just comedians, but people, and just you know, we want to make the most of anything. And after a second, we we forgot that we were in something that reminded me a lot of the red light district in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did feel like being in a human vending machine. Yeah, that is the closest. Like a... thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd like a day four. <laughs> Interesting oh, way to sort of instigate banter with the audience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And people didn't need to heckle either. They could just breathe on the perspex and write dirty words <laughs> in the screen. <laughs> yeah, if people are whispering next to you, just <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but that was cool. Other than that, I've done a couple of gigs for Spiky Mike around the Midlands as well. He oh, always yeah. runs good gigs. They were all socially distanced as well. Like I said, man, we're, we're good at adapting. Like if the government decided to give us some accurate guidelines that we could stick to yeah. to make comedy happen, then we'd do it. You know, we'd oh, make it yeah. happen. There I didn't are... do any uh, drive-in gigs. Did no. you do any drive-in gigs? No, I didn't. No, I heard a lot about them, though. And I've heard good and on... bad things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've had a couple of people on who've done them, and, and they've said that they were, like, they were really surreal because they said, like, it, it, it was nice, like a normal gig, but, like, they were beeping in place of their laughter, and they couldn't tell if it was, like, applause or beeps to say, because... <laughs> You know, traditionally in a car, if someone beeps at you, you've done something wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it must be a real weird sort of having to retrain your brain going, no, no, it's a good thing now. I used to do a bit of material about how I think that horns should have different sounds. I think you should have like one on each side, like one positive, one negative. <laughs> yeah. You know, because some people use it as like a hi. You know, yeah, it's yeah, gonna- yeah. Beep, beep, you know, like, hey, man, it's just me. Remember, like, you know, wave at somebody or get their attention ever. And then the other, it, it's only supposed to be used for an emergency, really, as in, yeah. you know, we're we're about to make full contact at the yeah. speed. <laughs> you know? But no, that's weird. And I think some people were using windscreen wipers as like instead uh, of clapping as well, which doesn't make a lot of noise. No. And also, I don't know, it kind of looks, are you waving me off? That's Is it, that my th- time? Sometimes <laughs> on, a, on a gig, like, you'll, people will just clap instead of laughing so like sometimes they'll do both but sometimes it's so funny like it for some reason it's a step beyond funny so they've stopped laughing like it's so funny they've stopped laughing and they're just clapping now so that'd just be sort of window wipers like do you enjoy that one (laughs) that'd be weird i mean 
I haven't done one, but I, I would give anything a try. Oh, you know, yeah. it's, if, if somebody says to me as well, like, oh, we're going to do a gig. Everyone's going to be in huge bubbles. Like the super furry animals did that show, yeah. the gig, or it was the Flaming Lips, sorry. And they did a show in those massive bubbles. Like, you know, the ones people play football in, Zorbing, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that what it's called? So they were all in those Zorbs and the band were in Zorbs as well. And all of the audience were in Zorbs. And I'd love to do a gig like that. I think that would be fun. Yeah. But you might not be able to hear a single thing, anyone laughing or anything. But no. I'll, I'll try anything I'm once. Not, I'm not sure it'd be better. No, I, <laughs> no, I doubt it would. But again, I'm willing. it sounds like the type of thing people would try in Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They'll be Give it a the, try. The, the company that run the silent disco stuff will be moving yeah. on to Zorb comedy. Absolutely. That does sound like the, the silent disco yeah. equivalent. <laughs> and they'll do it like, like they'll, they'll treat it like a traditional Zorb. Like they'll roll down a hill while they're in it, <laughs> get everyone to chase them around. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely do it. As long as it's late night. Oh, yeah. Anything past. If it's a 2 a.m. gig, I yeah, think yeah. comedians are, at that point, they're, they're just as drunk as the audience. They'll yeah. try anything. Put me straight I don't in Zorb. Think, I don't think you need a license to be in a Zorb. Do you? <laughs> I don't, Can you drink no. and Zorb? <laughs> I, I shouldn't think so. Did you know, right, I, f I found this out a few years ago. Now, I don't, I don't know if it's actually true, that being said, because I've not heard anything about it since. But someone once told me, because I used to always when, when I was young in my 20s I'd ride my bicycle home like after a night out and I'd be smashed and sort of just riding side to side but it's like two in the morning so there's no one around but apparently you can get points on your license from riding a bicycle whilst drunk what yeah so and then about two weeks after someone told me that I was again I was drunk and I was going home and I turned and saw the police, a police car, like just coming around the corner. So I just shot off like as quick as I could, sort of <laughs> went down a back road and hid and they weren't chasing me, but I was hiding anyway. I was going to say, did they pursue you? No, no, they didn't give a <laughs> That would have been the quickest segment on cops ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A bicycle, getting chased down by the police. Wow. Yeah. yeah I could... once drunkenly in Swansea, where I, when I was living in Swansea, in St. Thomas, I'd been out drinking and as I was walking home, there was like a discarded bike in a skip Yeah. and I just pulled it out and drunkenly rode that home and kind of like just left it outside. And I, I was, <laughs> I was, I didn't remember anything. And I woke up the next day and like came out to my front door, tripped over the bike. I was like, who the hell left this <laughs> horrible, rusty piece of junk here? And then I had flashbacks of like cycling it. And I don't know how I managed to cycle it home because this thing had just the metal frame of the tires. Like there was no tire on the bike. Wow. It was it was a mess, man. It was bent out of all recognition. It did it barely looked like a bike anymore. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. somehow, I mean, that's the weird thing about being drunk. You you kind of you get superpowers. Your lack of inhibition just allows you to do things you wouldn't otherwise Absolutely. do. Absolutely, it's quite incredible. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> if you're sitting there during lockdown thinking, oh, I can't do that thing. I want to do that thing. Just get drunk. Like, you can definitely do it. <laughs> that's definitely the British way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Right. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll ask you some team emergency questions. Okay. They're just they're just questions. Not really. Not for an emergency. I just It's just a good way to put the word tea in it. <laughs> what is your favorite tea? My favorite tea. If you, if you have one. At home, we drink whatever is cheapest. Okay. <laughs> Whatever's on offer in the supermarket. Just like a, just a, an everyday sort of. Yeah, Breakfast like a tea. brand. So, you know, if there's a big, but I really, I do like an Earl Grey. I tend to, I tend to drink an Earl Grey if I'm just having a tea nice. by myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I've had very few Earl Greys, but I have really enjoyed a few of them. Oh, actually, wait. Oh, that is it. I was trying to remember why I knew something about you and Earl Grey. That's what you told me you had at home. Yeah. I did. I, I sent you one, didn't I? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I decided not to. Cause the, because I have them. That, well, yeah. <laughs> But there was a particular tea pigs Earl Grey that like they do two different Earl Greys and I was going to send you one and then the envelope was full. So I read, I don't know if this is true, but why Earl Grey was invented the drink. It was to mask the taste of the lime scaled water. Oh, really? For the Earl or whoever the tea was invented for. So apparently the, their source of water was really disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so they developed a specific tea to try and mask that taste yeah like so it's quite a, so that's why earl grey i think is quite a quite a sharp taste that sounds entirely plausible yeah it sounds it sounds like one of those urban myths that might not even be true but i like to believe it is you know yeah absolutely well i'll tell you what if there's any listeners that are listening that know if that's true or know any other theories get, get in touch 
teapartypod at gmail.com or any of the social medias. That is the letter T party pot, by the way. Good. Right, now, do you, do you like a biscuit? Do you dunk a biscuit in a tea? Mm. What's, Absolutely. What's your go-to biscuit? Uh, chocolate covered hobnob is the classic. That's Solid. the one I like to go for. Yeah. yeah. I think that's my favorite. Other than that, I think... I'm quite partial. I I quite like just dark chocolate as well. Yeah. I just like dunking dark chocolate in it. So. Oh, yeah. just dark chocolate. I thought you meant. Yeah. I thought you can say like a dark chocolate digestive. No, not a not a digestive. Just <sighs> just dark chocolate. Just dunk it in. Yeah. Let wow. it melt. It has to. The tea has to be absolutely piping hot, and the dark chocolate then has to be dripping. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So you just end up with like a sort of a mocha tea. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Sounds good, man. Nice. Yeah, and no, I've got, uh, at any given time, I've got at least two packets of Asda's Oaty Crumbles, which are just mm. their chocolate hobnobs. I always get annoyed when I go to a supermarket and they don't have their own brand of hobnobs. You you get all of the variations. You know, you've got Oaties, yeah. which is what they're called in Tesco, Lidl, and Aldi. And yeah. then Asda is obviously the Oaty Crumbles. B&M Bargains has probably got their own variation as well called oh, sure. like, like some mess Oaty. up version. <laughs> Yeah, man. Or instead of like uh, crimbles. hobnobs, it's probably like hibnibs or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I like them. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll always have more. Right. I've got a couple more. I've got one that came up from a conversation recently. This is this one's not tea related, but it is. It is interesting, right? If you so, I was I was talking to a guy called Luke Branch, who's a, a musician from a band called Asylums, and he was talking about how he's getting a cab home once, and the cab driver was telling him about how he was a healer and like he had the ability to produce smoke from his fingers and my mate was like sure okay whatever (laughs) Uh, and then he 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 stopped the cab to let him get out and then sort of he took the money before he gave him the change just went and smoke came out of his fingers and just absolutely bizarre it's it's just a real weird real weird situation but it leads me to the question if you had to die by evaporation, <laughs> uh, which part of you would you like to evaporate first? <laughs> wow, what a left field question for my absolutely <laughs> insane journey yeah. that your friend took in a cab. What a, for so many questions there. I mean, I've got a couple of questions back at that situation. Like, absolutely. If you, for, that seems like such a weird ability. You know, to, and also to call yourself a healer, in what way does that have a healing property to yeah. have smoke come out of your fingers? I've never thought, oh, you know, my back hurts. <laughs> if only if only I somebody could maybe have smoke yeah. blown at my back via their fingers. If that if that that might fix the situation. Yeah. Matthew also, Crosby suggested that... that the only way that that is really helpful is if you've you've got like a beehive and you need to sort of make a more docile. <laughs> That's just such a weird skill. And also, if that is any, if that was a valuable skill, he wouldn't be driving a cab. No, this is exactly I mean, the point. Yeah, he wouldn't need to be driving and telling passengers that. If you, if he was a, if he was had healing properties, you'd make, you'd make a fortune. Yeah. If I, if I had to die by evaporation and I needed a part of me to evaporate first, um, I'm gonna choose my head. Okay. Yeah. For the for the same reason that I always bite the head of a gingerbread man first. <laughs> I don't want them to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it over and done with. A horrible death. Yeah, just brain first, okay? Evaporate my brain. I don't want to feel any of the rest of my body fading away. I don't want to be <laughs> looking at my body physically leaving the rest of itself yeah. beer, as, as vapor. That sounds like a horrible way so to go. Are you, are you going head first or brain first? brain it yeah. can come out through my ears it can look terrifying and i want to be sat in the back of that dude's cab and when he says he can have smoke come out of his fingers i'd be like that's nothing mate yeah. i can make What's it this? come out of my nose <laughs> eyes mouth and ears and, and then by the way just you're gonna have to dispose of a body <laughs> yeah can i change the destination of this cab please <laughs> yeah. to the undertaker <laughs> yeah no that was my go-to answer is uh, is the brain brain first because like how fun would it be for everyone else watching to see you just go vacant and they're like what's going on and then they see like just smoke pouring out of you that that'd be a hell of a, a vision wouldn't it and also if that if that is the first thing that goes and then that somehow stops the rest of the process of the rest of your body evaporating at the autopsy they're going to be like this guy's got no brain <laughs> <laughs> how did here? he function for so long with no brain. That's a miracle. 
So do do you anticipate that it would be your brain? Your brain would evaporate and nothing else would. I don't know, man. I don't. Or would the dream be for the whole body to go up? I think I would like the rest of my body left behind, if possible, so that my yeah. family have something to bury. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, don't yeah. have to. They don't have to like set off a helium balloon or something yeah. with my remains. <laughs> I'd rather it was in a. Just get a mason jar of gas. <laughs> That's all you Put are the now. lid back on. You're letting him out. <laughs> Right, and now this one, so you're, uh, I'm 35, so you're slightly younger than me. Yeah, well, one year. Yeah, and you come from a slightly hotter country, so yeah. this is a, this is potentially a, a, a more pertinent question. Do you drink hot drinks, like do you drink tea in hot weather to cool you down? This is, again, this is a very British thing, like we don't. We don't drink hot drinks to cool ourselves down no, it's stupid. in Spain. We drink hot drinks, but not. we don't think it's giving us a cooling <laughs> effect. No, it's nonsense. No? <laughs> it's such a weird myth. It's one of the like... maddest things I've ever heard. Like, people have told me that for years, and I'm like, no. It's not the same thing of like people telling you to take your coat off because you won't feel the benefit when you go outside. I hate <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I will feel, I'm feeling the benefit right now, yeah. <laughs> right? Turn your heating up. It's too cold in here. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, yeah. I'm being passive aggressive here, all right? That is why I'm still wearing my coat. Yeah. To drink a hot drink in order to cool yourself down, that, yeah, it makes no sense. You might as well just scold yourself. <laughs> just chuck a hot, just have a, just chuck a bucket of hot water over yourself. Go, I feel much cooler now. That's wonderful. That's much, what a better effect. Yeah, absolutely. And likewise, like in winter, I don't, I don't put uh, ice cubes under my armpits to cool, to you know, <laughs> regulate my body temperature. It's absolute nonsense. Ridiculous. I, I have heard people use the same excuse for drinking cold beer, though. Some people say, oh yeah, it's refreshing to drink beer. You know, in the sunshine, which is the way I think it's like drink a cold drink if you're in hot climate. Absolutely, to, yeah. To refresh yourself. But some people I've seen them drink cold beers in the winter in the UK, and they've been like, "Yeah, well, the thing is, the way it works because it's cold, it warms no, you. It doesn't work like that." Those people have a problem. <laughs> they've really got issues they need to address with with medical professionals. That's. <laughs> I'd love it if it was a doctor telling them his advice. <laughs> It's probably it's probably just a guy in a cab, isn't it? It's yeah, a guy in a it, cab. Yeah. When yeah, I'm a I'm a doctor, mate. And, He's an uh, off license. He's a, <laughs> yeah, runs an off license on the side. Just like oh, you should drink beer to call you. Oh, by the way, I know one. It's out of my boot. <laughs> Wait a second. These are all B and M. These are all B and M branded beers. <laughs> Why is this called a bore? <laughs> Amazing. It's a uh, a liger. No, I don't know. <laughs> Step lager. I'll, I'll, I'll try to make that make sense, but it didn't really. I couldn't justify it in my head. <laughs> right, I think that's it. Right, I've got another question that I asked a couple of times. I feel like you'll take the question in the right spirit. I, I stopped asking it for a few episodes, but I'm going to ask you because I, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like you'll take it in the right way. Feel honoured. Yeah. <laughs> so Brennan Reese was telling me a story about how when he was in Australia, he went out swimming in the sea. And there was like a massive riptide and he got like dragged out to sea and he nearly died. Wow. And that led me to ask him if it was the other way around and his friend had died, would he have told his friend's family or would he have just sort of run away? <laughs> or like, would you make up an excuse and be like, oh, yeah, they were, it was a shark. It was a real <laughs> just trying to yeah. dove yourself of the guilt. <laughs> Oh, wow. So That's what, a great question. What would you do? Would you tell your friend's family? Would you lie about it? Or would you just run away? So what's the? what would you tell her? What would be the truth? That your friend just didn't have the upper body strength? Oh, to... no. The, the truth would be <laughs> that you went in the sea when you knew it was dangerous, but you convinced your friend to go in. So technically, oh, it's wow. your fault. Wow. Okay. Ooh. Would I? I don't know if I could live with the guilt. I'd hope that in telling the parent. <laughs> oh, Wow. I would, I would lie. I would definitely <laughs> lie, 100%. I would tell the parents that it was a shark or, <laughs> or like a whirlpool or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, um, something spectacular. But I, yeah, I'd make it sound like they went out heroically, you know? I'd give them some kind of legend. Yeah. They'd, they'd rename the beach after my friend. Yeah. That is what would happen because of the story I'd give. He saved that. Um, yeah. He saved the dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an incredible He's, answer. He saved the dolphin, and I tell, and I'd hope that by telling the family this, 
and by spreading the story so much, I'd also be lying to myself and I'd convince myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before my brain evaporated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why, like, maybe your brain just runs really hot when you're lying, and it's just, of, you, you lie so hard that you just your brain just evaporates. It's guilt. It's the fire of guilt, man. It's just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, amazing. Nice. <laughs> So what what have you got coming up? Have you got any gigs or anything coming up? Obviously, you've got your album coming out in some way. Yeah, man. Yeah, so pe- I, people I should just know. Google Ignacio Yeah, Lopez. check me out. If you go to, like, I haven't updated my website in forever. I'm, like, the laziest guy with my website. I'm always on social media posting stuff on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But my website's always, like, a few months behind everything. Yeah. So I think currently, if you go on my website, I'm going to try and change this today. So hopefully by the time people <laughs> listen to your podcast, this won't be true anymore. But if you go on my website right now, comedylopez.com, I think it's a link advertising tickets to the recording of my special, oh, which okay. was a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. But if, I'm going to change that so it's hopefully a link to some other stuff, some other fun stuff. Yeah. So you can... Just to catch you I'm out, always... I'm going re- to edit this immediately. <laughs> Release it this <laughs> evening. You, there's, you'll definitely get that done before I change my website. <laughs> you don't even... Don't don't put any pressure on yourself, man. Give it, give it a couple of days and you'll probably still beat me. I... What am I doing? I, when are you guys out of lockdown? Is it the 3rd of December? Is that right? Yeah, I think the last day is the 2nd. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I've de- I definitely got a gig on the first day back in England oh, okay. in somewhere. I can't remember where. My agent books me places and they're always really difficult to get to. Sure. <laughs> Classic. He doesn't. Yeah. And, you know, he lives up the north of England. He doesn't understand that Wales isn't the easiest place to get to anywhere from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's pretty much one road in and out, so it can be difficult to get to places. But so I, I'm gigging. I will be gigging in December, but doing online stuff. I'm running my own gig again online via Zoom and YouTube private link, so people could book tickets for that. And hopefully, I'll be on tour next year, and people can come catch me there. Yeah. So comedy, comedy Lopez on all social media and website, etc. Because nobody can spell or remember Ignacio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it'll be written in the, you know, when people are listening to this, it'll be, oh, the it'll be written at the top of it. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, that makes me realise that I introduced you as Ignacio and I've said your name a couple of times, but I'm not sure I can say it in the traditional Spanish method. No sweat, man. I, I've given the amount of people I've told how to pronounce it and they've gone on stage immediately and butchered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just the curse of having an unusual name in comedy. I've been asked so many times, is my name a stage name? <laughs> and I've had to explain. I was like, why would I pick a Spanish stage name so difficult for people to yeah, pronounce yeah, in yeah, this yeah. country? I remember, you know, I would have just gone with Juan or something. Juan Lopez. That's easy. Yeah. Everyone can say Juan or Jose. But no, it's Ignacio. But it's my dad's name. So it's my name. Uh, cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, see, my surname catches people out. Well, actually, as a Spanish person, my first name may catch you out as well, because a lot of people call me C. Ah, makes sense, yeah. The way you spell the abbreviation, yeah, S-I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's obviously it's short for Simon, so it's, it's So if Simon, people but... say, what's your name, and you're like, oh, like online or something, and you're like, yes, and they're like, no, you don't understand the question. What is your name? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, my uh, the Alexa calls me C, and I'm like, no, it's... Learn, learn to pronounce it, please. It's sorry. I once, to, I once did a gig. My girlfriend's Welsh. Oh, go on, man. Oh, sorry. I, I, so I once did a gig and got introduced as uh, C. Diabes. <laughs> and I was like, That's, both of those are wrong. Very. <laughs> Hopefully your OCD show will help people correct the pronunciation of that in their head as yeah, well. The hopefully. Well, that was also it was the opening joke to my first show because my the first show was called Leaves with a D. Because that's how I tell people it's spelled and pronounced. I don't have an easy one for my name. It's too long. No. Four syllables in the first. Uh, and the abbreviation of Ignacio is Nacho, which doesn't make it any easier. No. <laughs> Believe that. No, that's more confusing, if anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my girlfriend, we've set all of our Siri and all of the voices on our different computers and stuff to Australian, because that seems to be the best middle ground oh, really? for pronunciation between pronouncing Welsh stuff and Spanish stuff. Yeah. So that's the best one. Like on my phone, I can talk to it in Spanish and English and it talks back to me. But the ones we've got around the flat are all with an Australian accent, because that seems oh, to be fun. the best middle ground. 
<laughs> yeah, we thought it would be funny to change our one to... I can't remember what it was. Well, we definitely did Australian. I think we tried like most of the accents. And uh, as it turns out, they just don't understand what we're saying and can't respond <laughs> In as many ways, like they just, as soon as it changes accents, they're like, we don't know the words to describe what you're asking. That's... I think that's just the world's way of showing how they feel about the UK. Sure. I think that they're kind of, if you said it to any accent other than the UK, they're like, oh, fucking British again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys. <laughs> Like if you change it to Spanish and you start talking uh, to it, it immediately just starts pretending it can't speak English. Yeah. <laughs> no hablo inglés, lo siento. <laughs> How funny. What are you doing anyway? I know this. Pro- you've probably tell people on your podcast what you're up to, but what have you got planned, man? Oh, just just this. Just doing more of this. <laughs> we don't, I don't know when we'll return to normalcy, but no, I can't I've, wait. I've got a gig on the 5th of December. Sure. Which is just a, like a little thing in Kent for very little money but it should be fun just doing a lot of new material let's see but every time i tell one of my family that like oh yeah i'm gigging on this date or something and they're like oh that's great you know you're back gigging again and you know at least you got money coming in i'm like yeah but the gig doesn't actually pay no. anywhere near as much as it did before the pandemic it doesn't even cover my travel but i'm just desperate to gig so that's yeah, why i'm yeah, doing yeah. it <laughs> that's it like it's quite early on was it no it's near the end of the last lockdown it's sort of when everything's getting relaxed a mate of mine just sent me a message and he was like, oh, do you want to come and open this gig in Cornwall for 50 quid? And I was like, it's going to cost me 80 pounds to drive there. So <laughs> not really. Was that Graham? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you do the gig? <laughs> no, not that one. No, yeah. but I, I, weirdly, I have done, I did a, Graham arranged a tour for me in Cornwall a few years ago and it was great and I had a great time and I have gone down there to try out stuff before. Yeah. But it's such a stretch because Cornwall's difficult to get to from anywhere, but like to get there from Wales, it would be quicker to swim. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it would be, yeah, yeah. because we have to just cross and Cornwall's right there. But to get there from South Wales, I got to go all the way up to come back down again. And yeah. on public transport, is a nightmare. But when you're it's it's really worth doing when you can get a string of gigs down there. Yeah. But that's right now, that's impossible. So, you know, yeah. I'll have to wait until I can't go back to Cornwall until stuff is fully lifted, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I've done a few for Graham. He's a good guy. Yeah, um, he's great, man. I love, yeah. I love gigging with Graham. He's a good laugh. Yeah, I, but I did a preview with Bobby Mayer nice. in Falmouth for Graham last year. Post? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we drove down there, and then we were considering staying at someone's house, and then just went like, "Do you want to drive back?" It's like, "Yeah, sure." So Bobby Mayer and I just spent like thirteen hours in the car <laughs> to do an hour each. It's a great gig. It was so much fun, but it was like. Yeah, it's a hell of a we, hell of a we did a we did a daytime gig in a place called Lizard, which Graham arranged because there'd been a big festival cancelled down that way. Right. So he booked a couple, and we like loads of us comedians had booked travel and accommodation and stuff. So he put on a bunch of gigs to kind of make up for the fact that this stuff was cancelled, and he put one in a town called Lizard, which I'd never heard of before I was playing there. And a I, town I, called I, Lizard. Yeah, and it's the lowest part of the UK. It's the lowest like physical part of the, the land mass of the UK that you can get to. Lizard. It's the tiny wow, okay. little town. And we got we got we drove all the way down there. Like we've passed all of the places that we've heard of in Cornwall and we just start going deeper and deeper towards the very end of the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as we're getting lower and lower, we, we're like this there's no way this is a real place. Like there's no way there's a town called Lizard. <laughs> we've been stitched up. Yeah. And we're driving eventually we spot a sign that says like welcome to Lizard and we were like, Oh my god, amazing. It's an actual <laughs> it's <real>. place. Yeah. <laughs> and we passed the sign and then we had to continue driving for like another half an hour until oh. we reached the end of this town where there was a holiday day park and we did a gig in the daytime it was me chris purchase who else was there simon king from canada yeah my friend cole howarth who i don't think he performs stand-up anymore uh, and a couple of other people as well uh eddie french do you know him yes yeah we did a gig. he was there as well and we got there and it, it was a daytime gig and there was a bunch of kids there as well I've, I've actually got a if you've got time i've got a very good story which kind of connects yeah, to on. this you want to hear okay so this we we arrive and we, we, we're told it's just a show for adults, right? And all of the, like, I don't mind performing to kids as well. Like, I can't perform clean. Yeah. I've done a, a bunch of clean shows. I've done shows for kids as well. I prefer to gig for adults, but it's not an issue. Yeah, yeah. But some of the other acts were like, we don't have anything that's suitable for children. Like, it's all fully adult show. And I said, well, look, we were told there weren't going to be kids here. So as long as we make the adults aware, 
which I said, so we went around, we were like, look, this is an adult show. And they were like, it's fine because these are people who live at the lowest part of the UK. You know, they, <laughs> it's, it's like the wild west down there in the end of Cornwall. Like these people are actual pirates. You know yeah. what I mean? We kind of like, we go there and we perform. And I told, did you get paid in gold bullion? Mate, this is unreal, <laughs> right? We we got we finished the gig and it was like donations, right? There was a small fee, but like people were putting money and stuff in a bucket as well. Yeah. And one guy came up to me outside. He was like, "Guys, I'm really sorry. I don't have any money. Would you like this bag of weed?" <laughs> <laughs> and we were just like looked at each other and like none of us really smoke weed, but we just went, "Yeah, yeah, we'll take the bag of weed <laughs> off you, mate. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it." It just seemed like one of those kind of gigs. But the gigging for children, this is the story I wanted to tell. This might have to be cut out entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, yeah. What I'm going to tell you. So it's a secondhand story, but it comes from advice that I gave somebody and it resulted in this story. Whenever I'm performing and there's kids in the crowd and they're not supposed to be there or it was supposed to be another show and acts are worried about going up. And I did this at In Lizard. There was kids in the front row, young kids. And I'll always go to the front of them if I'm emceeing or trying to warm up before another act. To make the other acts feel more comfortable, I'll MC the kids and I'll ask them what their favorite swear word is. Right. And I'll get the kids swearing and then I'll make some joke about like, oh, who taught you that word? Or I'll chastise the parents. But it kind of bursts the tension because yeah, yeah, yeah. kids have sworn. Then the, you know, the the other acts feel more comfortable coming on and saying shit or even fuck or whatever. Yeah. So I, I did that at this gig and it worked. I think one of the kids said shit and, you know, it gets a big laugh. Or, and then a younger kid said their favorite swear word was bum and it's adorable. You know what I yeah. mean? And the parents don't mind and everyone's like, ah, it's fine. Like they're going to hear some new words today, but it doesn't matter. I gave this advice to a friend of mine called. Do you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he was, he said, that's a great idea. Man. And I was like, yeah, it works every time. I've done festivals with it. I've done all sorts of stuff. If I've ever emceeing, there's a kid in there. It's a really good trick to do. So he goes, okay. He gave this advice to a guy called. Yes. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, he told me, I think it was. And he gave advice. He went to a gig somewhere in a festival in a field. And <laughs> have you heard this story? No, but I'm excited. <laughs> so he, they're at this field and there's a bunch of kids there. And is emceeing and he's panicking because he's like, this. We, they didn't know there was going to be kids there. And said, don't worry, Ignacio told me this trick. And he explained what you do. You go up, you say, what's your favorite swear word? The kid says it, ah, you know, the tension is like lifted and everything Everything feels great. It's funny, yeah. you can make some... And he's, oh, okay, great, I'm going to try that. He goes up, starts emceeing a bit, and then he goes, ah, what's your name? And this kid's like, and this kid's like eight. And he says, what's your favorite swear word? And drops the N-bomb. <gasps> Oh, no. And it just sucked the entire atmosphere out of the whole room and just flatline, didn't know what to say to her because what, how do you follow that up? An eight year old has just used the N word no. at the beginning of the gig and it just ruined him. And like, I've, I felt personally responsible for that. You know, I felt like <laughs> I was going to have to go back and explain to his family how he died out at the sea <laughs> and it was my fault. <laughs> That's amazing. I can that's see that story going. No. And I still do it. I still use that trick. But in my head, I'm kind of like, because I've now heard that story, I'm like, how would I react to the situation? Would I make some? I still haven't come up with the answer. I'll have to tell you if it ever happens again. But wow. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's, a, yeah. Uh, is, uh, is there a way of dealing with that? I don't know. Because you can't, you can't even say like, who taught you that? Because like, they're just going to point out some racist in the crowd. Yeah. Gonna, you know what I mean? Be, oh, that's that's my uncle Terry back there. He loves that word. He uses it all of the time. Is yeah. he white? Yeah, super white. Yeah, that's the <laughs> whitest man I've ever seen in my life. That yeah, is that, that skinhead guy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, the guy from the woodworking show. I recognize him. Yeah, yeah he's got the eighty-eight tattoo. That's, you? that's right. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so that's my man. story about both Lizard and the, the trick, the emceeing trick with kids. That's incredible. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you feel better, I'll, I'll, I could bleep out names. Yeah, that would make me feel better. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to stitch him up. So if you bleep out the names, that's I'm happy for the story to go out. And yeah. uh, Also, don't bleep me saying N-bomb. Otherwise, it's going to seem like no, I no, was using the N-bomb. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll add it in the intro and say that I, I had to bleep the word that he said because... <laughs> Oh, because, I can't believe know, he actually said it. 
just say like I don't know if it's because they're different culturally in Wales or in Spain, <laughs> but he just thinks it's okay and it's not, man. All right, it's not acceptable this day and age. Oh, it's a real monster. Then he burnt a steak like it was. Oh God. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, oh incredible right i think that's i think that's a pretty strong place to uh, yeah man great chat yeah i've enjoyed the teas i've enjoyed chatting and i'm probably gonna drink one more if it's not too much tea to drink yeah (laughs) yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have another one after this so right your online shows where where can people find the tickets those just to remind us any of my social media so if you look at if you look up comedy lopez on twitter instagram facebook I will post and advertise as soon as I've got another online show booked yeah. in. And I'm going to try and sort that out today, but I yeah. don't want to I jinx myself. So just vaguely in some point in the next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, check it out. Keep looking and you'll you'll find it. You, you said there might be one at the end of the month. Yes, I am going to do one at the end of the month for sure. So like, that's only a week away. In fact, as soon as you yeah. hear this, go on social media. There will, yeah. be, a, there will be a gig online booked yeah, and yeah. On, on Facebook and Book stuff tickets. ready. Yeah, I'm doing something tonight, but that's I'm not going to release this in time. So, oh, man. yes, cool. So you could see on your social media, you, you've got a Kofi. Yeah, yeah. They all so people could donate just the fee of a coffee if they enjoy any of my content. And I'm also going to be releasing merchandise on there, which I've been oh cool. De- spent me a long time designing. But and also I've got a bunch of old shows filmed that I'm just going to start releasing online as well for people yeah. to watch. Yeah, uh, as videos are they? Yep, online videos. Might put out some audio ones as well. I'm definitely going to release one for Christmas as well. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be it's a Christmas show I recorded last year. Sweet, sounds good. Thanks, mate. Nice man. Right, cool. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Lovely to meet you. This is this keeps happening. This I'd say it's actually the nice thing about about lockdown. Well, it's not the nice thing about lockdown because otherwise we may have met at a gig. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, as it stands, like it's been quite a nice way of sort of reaching out to people that I've not otherwise met yet so yeah it's been it's been really lovely yeah it's been a pleasure it feels like a, it's felt like a green room chat so yeah it, <laughs> yeah <helped>. definitely uh, <laughs> exchanging some odd stories asking some odd questions yeah it's been been good thanks very much man no problem mate and hopefully oh I'll, I'll see you soon all right speak soon pal cool. take care take it easy man bye Ciao. so that was ignatio lopez who is available on all social medias as Comedy Lopez because that is the easiest way of sorting his name out. He's got a Kofi up which you can donate to if you like the stuff that he's doing. It's basically a thing that a lot of people have been using to generate some money because obviously all of our work disappeared during the lockdown. So it's a great thing to be around. Speaking of If you enjoy this podcast, then I have actually started, well, if you enjoy this podcast or anything that I do, I have started a Ko-fi page in case you want to make any donations to me. You absolutely don't need to, but this does sort of take up uh, quite a chunk of my time during the week, and it'd just be lovely if I could sort of cover my expenses, you know, things that I need to do. I need to travel around, I need to send tea to other people, which doesn't cost too much. But, you know, it'd just be nice to sort of remunerate my time. So if you enjoy this podcast and you are able to donate anything, then I would absolutely really, really love it if you, if I could. You, you'll keep me in a house. <laughs> so that's, that's not true. I've, I've got a part time job that I'm starting, which is going to help with that. But obviously this i love doing this this is like my favorite thing and i'm going to keep doing it anyway but if you are able to donate some money i'll give you a shout out and at some point when i've got merch that's going to go on there as well and you know you're going to be able to buy like mugs and tea towels and teapots and things like that hopefully that's what i'm looking into i'm getting it designed at the minute and i'll I'll let you know when it's there so yeah if if you can donate anything to me to Ignacio, there's loads of comedians that are on there, all worthy of any donations that you may be able to help out with. But if you can't afford it or you don't want to, absolutely fine. No worries whatsoever. Just keep enjoying the podcast because that's what it's here for. Just for your enjoyment, keep you entertained. As ever, I'll put all the links, you know, social links and that sort of thing in the podcast description. I'll also put the Kofi link in there but just in case you're listening to this and can't be bothered to go and check the podcast description that is going to be co-fi that's ko hyphen fi.com forward slash sideves s-i-d-e-a-v-e-s you can donate any amount uh, whatever you want i just really appreciate it if you can't like i say no worries but i tell you what if you could go over to my instagram it's just instagram.com forward slash 
Tea Party Pod, or just search at Tea Party Pod. That is a letter T Party Pod. Same as Twitter. Like, give us a follow, give us some likes, anything like that. That's it's all appreciated. And I really love the reviews I get and the messages and stuff on iTunes or just through emails, or whatever. So if you want to get in touch, just to say hello, teapartypod at gmail.com or get in touch on any of the sort of social media pages. That's, it's lovely. I love it. I, lo- I love hearing from you guys. It's real cool. But regardless, I just love doing this for the people that appreciate it. And, you know, that, that number is growing and that that's lovely. So thanks so much for listening in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye.